This must be the spot where the garrison trapped and killed the first royalists to get into the castle. And it's easy to see why. Stuck in no man's land, with only smoking ruins around the courtyard for cover, they would have been cut down, just like Colonel Moore claims they were. The journal says that after their disaster in the courtyard, the royalists changed tactics. They returned with more men, gave the garrison one last chance to surrender, and this time they meant business. They bombard the outer wall of this castle with heavy cannon to try and make a breach in the wall. Yeah, it says that they, they're, they're shooting at the outside wall from 9 o'clock in the morning till 5 o'clock in the evening, and they hit it with 96 shots. <laughs> By my maths, that is one shot every five minutes, which is an incredible amount of firepower. It is, isn't it? I mean, in the end, it was successful. They did make a breach in that wall. And of course, they, the defenders had rushed up and tried to stop them getting through. It's at that point that the hand-to-hand -hand fighting starts with the pikes and the muskets mm -hmm. and the clubs and everything. And they're, they're doing that for two hours. It must be absolutely horrendous. <laughs> Stuart thinks the Royalists bombarded the castle from the high ground, breaking down the defences in the south. And our analysis of the musket balls does suggest they were fired from some distance away, raining down on the men cowering inside the brick building. Look what we just found. This is a lead musket ball which has been embedded into the brick. It's fantastic. So it's just hit, hasn't it, and then just flattened as it's hit the brick wall. It's actually still got bits of brick embedded in that side, which is incredible. Our archaeology has now built up a terrifying picture of the final 48 hours of the defenders' lives. And it backs up Colonel Moore's journal in every detail. After being bombarded by constant fire with the attackers through the breach, the defenders set the brick mansion on fire before fleeing to the tower. A terrifying sequence of events which we found in both the archaeology and the documents. They were now at the mercy of the royalist commander, Sir Michael Woodhouse, and Richard thinks he's worked out how he forced them to surrender. All I had to do is run up the bank and attack that. That looks like a door, but yeah. it's actually a window opening. Now, they're trapped on the top floor. They can't do anything about people attacking the bottom of the castle. So this is another example of this building not really doing its job as a defence because it had a vulnerable window close to the ground. Yes, because the window, either side of the window, the wall is only about that thick. So it's dead easy to actually bash through. I think what we can see there is what was done during the Civil War. And that's what makes them give up, because they think that they're going to lay explosives and they say it's better to surrender than to be blown up. Yeah. Extraordinary, isn't it, to see something so vulnerable from all those years ago that led to such a terrifying end. Yeah.